In this very video, we're talking about a brand new system or feature coming to the war within called Delves. And this is footage that's brought to you, exclusive footage from the war within Alpha. Big shout out to Blizzard for having me in the Alpha. And in this kind of video, I want to take you through all the mechanics, what to expect, and what are some of the rewards you can earn from Delves. So let's just get started. So Delves can be found in random parts of the world, open world. I chanced upon it here, right? And you won't see it on the map distinctively, but it basically look like cave-like entrances. And I think when the game launches, Blizzard will probably put them on the world marker as something kind of obvious so that you can see them easily. All right, looks like we found our very first delve. Um, this is the one. You enter the delve of Crawl Mines, and this is the UI. It asks you which tier of the delve do you want, and you can choose minimum challenge or something like a moderate challenge, both are okay. You can see for minimum challenge, naturally your eye level gear that it rewards you is way lower for 3-7. And you deal with certain types of, I guess enemy affixes is the right words. This one has one that slows your movement speed by 50%. So anyway, if you toggle to tier two, you can tell that enemies now have 25% more health, they do 25% more damage, there's more traps and challenges. So basically, it scales in difficulty as you go higher and higher up. For now, let's just choose level two and let's enter together. Okay, so we begin here. Um, so you can interact the supplies here. You can view brands, broads, beard supplies. So I've configured him as a healer, which is probably okay. I can make him a damage dealer too because I'm a paladin and I can self-heal, right? So that's a consideration there. Uh, you can view his different abilities that he will level up and learn. So it's quite clear that, you know, your companions, as they start going into delves with you, they will start leveling up. They start with some very basic abilities that I believe they just use on cooldown, probably. They're self-healing here. And as you level them up, I believe they just get stronger and stronger, as you can see. And then this thing also allows you to repair. So there you go. We have Bran Bronze at my companion there waiting for me. So let's just get this started. We are Delph here. The irony being, I'm actually walking pretty fast compared to his kind of truck. And then you got to free these people. Yeah, so these are kind of... um, This is level 2, right? And it's still generally really manageable. I personally think so. But as you do more of these, you get more gear and you get more rewards. Yeah, but the mobs generally, like, nothing too insane. Like, that obviously is a tank buster, nothing too sick. Honestly, I think even at level 3, I don't think it posed much of a problem. Okay, and then we got to free more people. It's just really easy stuff. There's a rare elite there, you see? Yeah, so these guys, they have a bit more, like, mechanics like that, which is obviously a some form of tank buster AoE. Oh, then you can kite him through the traps, I think. So Magni will spawn traps and you kite them through, I think. And then they will spawn this um, ability that you can use. When attacking an enemy, to root there in place for three seconds. So it's just a little bonus, right? To just help you make things a bit easier. Um, You can even like gather herbalism here. That's interesting. Okay, I'm, so I'm saving people. I'm saving people. You can see that's his trap over there. Sometimes they'll spawn these chests that increases your move speed. So it's kind of similar to Torghast. And I know that kind of brings up PTSD for some people. But yeah, the idea there is that you get your thing done. You can move really fast like what I am now. And then you turn it in at the end of the run. It's probably pretty decent for alts, actually. This way of gearing up. Yeah, it's kind of like scenario-based. And obviously, this is something that is targeted at people who don't really like to do like, um, you know, raids or Mythic Plus. They like to play World of Warcraft alone and still have a way to progress their gear. And there's the spades of this, right? Because these mobs have certain amount of challenges that... Um, you know, nothing too complicated in terms of mechanics, but it does kind of teach you uh, some of the combat fundamentals. Like, for example, interrupting tank busters, you know, aggro management as a tank. I wonder if you queue as a healer, what happens though? Also, what it does is it allows for you to hang out with just with your buddies, right? Like, if for example, you have a friend who plays this game casually, you can just hang out um casually and, and just do content together. And that's kind of nice. I know for some of my friends, they like to play with their significant others and they don't want anything too stress inducing right this could be a just a nice way to spend you know together time in a non-stress free environment gear your alts and then you have all these uh way stones meeting stones where i think you can actually swap your companions right you can make them swap to different setups so for example i can swap him to healer now that's possible but i see one him as a dps but you can swap him around i guess that's what i'm trying to say so at the end of the scenario you will always encounter 
some form of boss that will end the run. See, the bosses do some form of mechanics as well. I think you're not supposed to stand in that, maybe. Yeah. See, Magni is spawning traps again. You bring the boss over the traps here. Or rather, Brand, not Magni. So you can see Brand leveled up there. So he probably learned like a new ability. There's, there you go. Brand learns a new ability, right? So this is what happens when uh, you take them through adventures, your followers become more powerful. So the more powerful they are, the faster your future delves will be. And then you get this treasure chest at the end. Uh, it gives you some resonance crystal, which you can use to purchase um, from a vendor for rewards later on. And I'll show you the vendor in a bit. You get some companions here. Uh, you get some very cheap uh, kind of gear. So I got a ring here that I can I can instantly use, right? So that's nice. Then you can walk through these gold piles to just go at the end. Then you take this helicopter and that's pretty much the end of the run. So that's, that's one of the delves. Let's go try the others now. So in this cave here, it's probably where all the mushrooms are. This is the very next delve. And just so you know, you need an eye level of 5 to 5 to get to level 3. So we'll just do level 2 for now. And once you start, it kind of just phases you, right? You can see Bronzebeard now has level 2, right? So you unlock this trusty whip. So you can now interrupt spell ability. So yeah, your followers basically get stronger and stronger as time goes by. Okay, this is a interesting start. You actually have to jump into the water. And there's obviously different challenges, like there's this exploding shroom thing that you gotta dodge. But yeah, this is another delve, and you can tell that it looks very different, right? Versus the earlier mines that we did. This is a lot of the fungal kind of biome here. I don't know if you really need to kill everything. Actually, I got a feeling you don't need to kill everything. Okay, so this is a respawn point. So this, this thing not only allows you to change your followers kind of roles, it also acts as a respawn point. So that's pretty nifty. So yeah, just kill mobs, pretty easy stuff. So I think from the respawn point, you kind of know that you're going the right way, I think. I'm just gonna drop here. But yeah, the mobs barely threaten me all. So level two is honestly very easy. But then again, this is just close alpha. So they might tune the difficulty higher. But the way I see this content right now is really meant as a way to just let people have um, a very easy way to just gear up alts. It's definitely not a replacement for Mythic Plus at this moment. Even at tier three, I thought it'd be very difficult. It should be very manageable. Yeah, but this is the mini boss, kill the mini boss. And then sometimes you get side quests like that. Forbidden journal, recover this journal. Would you bring it to him? So you would then bring it to kind of like the Dell vendor in Donogal, which is the capital city, which by the way, there's already a video on my channel regarding the new capital city of the war within. You definitely want to check that out. It's already live on this channel. Link is also in the description. So Magni will prompt you sometimes that, hey, there's treasure nearby. Then you just probably stop and just check them out. Like in this case, there's a treasure chest. The treasure chest will give you some form of abilities. Again, very similar to Torghast, right? Uh, I wasn't doing the objective. I needed to be saving the scouts. You can see from the objective tracker here, I need to save three more of these people. All right, then as per the last um, delve, you always have to fight a final boss here. In this case, I'm fighting this spin, sh spin shroom, the name of the boss. It's clearly an AOE move out of it. So there's like very basic mechanics here, right? That obviously you can tank. You see, Belly is doing much damage to me as a tank. Um, you can probably pop a defensive and even eat that and just DPS. So it's quite phase role content, I think, um, at a tier two. Even at tier three, honestly, like I said, I think it's very doable solo content. It's not meant to be very difficult, challenging content. Delves, it's just meant uh, as a solo way for people to kind of just do casual content. It really isn't hardcore. That's my assessment of this um, content type. Now, they might surprise us and drop really good gear when it comes to life, but I doubt that's the intention of this kind of content. So once you beat the boss, Again, you can see Brand Bronze Bear is level up here. Once you beat the boss, you loot the treasure chest, you get more resonance crystal, and I can equip the new gear over here. And as always, you click on this thing and it will bring you out of the delve. And the third delve on the alpha is located here. And again, it's always all these kind of tunnel-like structures. And you know, you click on this and you face this Creve Girl's Rest is the next. A creek vols rest is the next one to test. So you can see Brand's Brom Beard is now level three. And you can tell how much level he needs, right? You can see over on this portrait over here when you hover that. Um, and he has learned Brand's Epic Egg. And this is an AoE damaging egg that will hatch into a devil's saw. It hatches and it causes um a fear AoE, I think. Yeah, it attacks them and fears them, apparently. So in this case, you need a candle, apparently. So it's quite cool. This is the mechanic of this uh, delve. Basically, you need to pick up this candle. 
Uh, you want to recover keepsakes. I'm guessing keepsakes are governed by these guys. I'm not sure. Oh no, it's those like items you see on the ground, I think. Yep, so this is where you loot the keepsakes. I think this candle tells you where the keepsakes are actually. And these kobolds are one of those that will run away and tag in other mobs. It's so funny, Bram Bronze Bear will chase down loose stragglers like that. Um, anyway, the elite earlier gave us a power, a chance to root people. Oh, it looks like your candle will extinguish from time to time. Oh, there's some traps here, by the way. Maybe on level three, that trap will one shot. But yeah, essentially, I think you already get the point, right? You go into the different delves, you find them on the map. They all have different challenges. They have different traps, different objectives, different mobs that do different things. Like for example, in this particular delve, they do this frontal that you need to watch out for. Um, and there's uh, different objectives. In this case, I need to be looting these uh, personal keepsakes essentially but my assessment about the bosses and the mobs is they are very manageable very and sometimes the npc will randomly find like some powers for you to use which is a nice touch okay so anyway earlier we picked up that journal together right you turn it in apparently here to this innkeeper that then rewards you with some companion experience so i was wrong you don't always turn it into the delve headquarters there might be some random npcs you turn it into all right, so earlier we collected some Delve currency, right? What are they used for? You can see over here, um, there's a Obsidian Ensemble vendor that sells you for resonant crystals in return. You get certain appearances and whatnot. So the currency here probably placeholders, right? Because they're literally only for one currency. And if I open them up, it says all your appearance I already learned because it's the alpha. So it looks like they would be adding some form of transmog to your Delve currencies. But the Delve headquarters is really over here. You can see Brand Bronze Beard waiting for me there. It's towards the north side of the city, under this another stone gazebo, lack of a better word. But you can see Brand Bronze Beard, our companion, is waiting for us. Um, but you can also go to this uh, Sir Finley Mergleton Delve Treasures, and this is where you can also spend your currencies. You can see we have gathered two hundred and twenty resonance currency, and with time, I can buy cool transmog like. Uh, the fungal mancer kind of, you know, helm. Various cosmetics, essentially. Like, for example, this back one looks pretty badass, maybe on Demon Hunters and whatnot. Uh, you can even buy toys. So it looks like it's just a very fun, casual piece of content um, that is just meant for you to play alone or maybe play with a small group of friends like you and your partner and you're in it for a stress-free time. This is probably very suitable content but I really, really doubt they intend for this to scale to crazy levels where it could replace raiding or it could replace Mythic Plus. This is clearly not the intention based on just the dynamics of the dungeon that I was doing. Um, and my assessment is that level three wouldn't be that difficult either. You know, the Delve reuses some of the UIs from Torghast. So you can see what they're trying to go for there. Basically repeatable content that is fun. And this time around, they did give you cosmetic rewards instead of tying it to some form of compulsory player power so i think kudos to blizzard on that but overall i do think that the delves they have potential it might not be for everyone especially if you do mythic class you do raiding and you do pvp endgame that might not appeal to you because the rewards from delves i don't think are as good but if you are playing this game hyper casually you play it alone and you dislike every activity i mentioned earlier i think this could be a really good kind of segue for you to start getting into some PvE content because it allows you to play against more and more difficult content uh, that's controlled by a computer AI. And it teaches you your basic rotation, how to interrupt, and it's in a judgment-free zone, right? So you can do whatever you want. Anyway, that does it for Delves. If you found this video helpful, make sure to smash the subscribe button. There's more exclusive alpha and beta coverage for the War Within coming to you from this channel. A big shout out to Blizzard for having me in the close alpha. Very grateful for the opportunity. And speaking about being grateful, a big thank you to all the Patreon subscribers that you see on screen. Thanks for making this channel possible. And if you'd like to support us, link to our Patreon also in the description below. The video in the middle of the screen will be of special interest to you. It's also for the War Within Alpha coverage. You don't want to miss that. And all my Alpha coverage videos are also linked in the description below. See you in the next video.